Okay, hello. If you're just joining us, uh, this is UAF eLearnings, creating content and instructional materials. This is a I Teach You Plus presentation. And uh, my name is Jennifer Moss, and I'll be talking with you this hour, probably less than an hour, on the subject of creating content for your online course and activities. So I'm going to actually go ahead and share part of my screen with you because my main presentation materials are there and I'm just going to go ahead and start that all right so again this is creating content and instructional materials this is part of um, I need to get over to that screen. This is part of the Build a Course series at UAF eLearning. And this session is about um, methods for delivering instructional materials in an online environment. And again, this is the second presentation in the I Teach You Plus Build a Course series that we are offering here at UAF eLearning through Google Hangouts. So welcome. Again, my name is Jennifer Moss, and I'm an instructional designer at UAF eLearning. And this is my contact information. If after this presentation you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me at either of these locations. All right, so I'd like to start off with a very brief introduction to the idea of organizing your content. Um, and a couple of best practices that we like to talk about here at eLearning. Um, this is not really the main focus of the session, but it comes into play with the content itself and can be pretty important. Um, for online content and courses, uh, UAF eLearning offers a template in Blackboard that you can use to get started with organizing your materials and activities. If you're offering an e-learning supported course, this will automatically be used as the basis for your course shell. Um, this template has been created based on national standards and research-based methodology for encouraging the best student success in your online class. We use Blackboard as a home base regardless of where the rest of your course is hosted. And we suggest using it at a minimum for things like regular course announcements and the Grade Center, especially. Um, I do want to mention that Blackboard isn't the only place that you can host your course materials online um, and interaction as well. Uh, this is the UAF eLearning, UAF community at UAF WordPress server. And um, this is a one of the locations that both eLearning supported courses and face-to-face -face courses that have online content are hosted uh, at our university. Um, and we also offer um, support with other a couple of other locations as well, such as Google Sites and Canvas LMS. I just wanted to mention this because um, no matter where you're hosting your course content, there are some um, things that we recommend in particular. And basically, although everyone organizes their material slightly differently, we recommend a kind of a specific structure um, for all of your instructional materials. And basically this means that everything that a student needs to accomplish a week's work or a unit's uh, work is contained or at least linked to within a single unit folder. Um, in asynchronous courses, this often takes the form of weekly, uh, weekly modules with firm due dates that are clearly listed in multiple places. Uh, and this, this helps the student really stay on track. So, Also, as Heidi detailed last week, 
to some extent um, in last week's I Teach You Plus session, Boba Course session. The materials within each of these learning modules, these lesson modules, um, are specifically aligned with measurable lesson objectives, and those with and those are aligned with the course objectives. And this may seem common sense and something that you feel like you already do, but it can be actually a bit tricky in practice. And uh, UAF eLearning instructional designers are certified with the quality manners model for assisting and assessing and course readiness. And so if you'd like more information about that, and if you would like to put your course materials and your lesson materials to the test, please let us know. Uh, quality matters is a national standard. Um, and it's something that we're trying to encourage everyone to, to think about. Also, um, one other uh, thing I wanted to mention before we start talking about content itself, um, if you come in for any open lab sessions, we'd be happy to go over any of the different platforms. And in future sessions uh, during these virtual online uh, workshops, we will be addressing more specific, specifics and ideas for other platforms that you can use. But also there's um, this thing called the Owner's Manual on ITCHU, which is our faculty development, faculty resource website. And on this page, there are just a whole bunch of kind of condensed um, jumpstart sections for getting you started and getting you thinking about new ideas for not only content and content delivery, but things like access to demo courses if you'd like to see what other people are doing. And it also provides access to the uh, UAF eLearning Blackboard getting started template um, for faculty for our classes. So I encourage you to take a look here um, and see all the things that are that are available. Okay, so let's move on and talk about the materials that you use in class and what you can do in the, on the in online environment. And we're really only gonna scratch the surface. Um, and what I would like to get you thinking about first off is thinking about your class. Like if you're moving from a face-to-face -face class and you're thinking about how can I put this stuff online or maybe you're starting to teach online but you haven't really, um, done as much as you would like to, think about how you normally or how you would um, envision your class to work during the face-to-face -face, face -face time. You know, do you, do you stand up at the blackboard and lecture? Um, do, you, uh, do you bring in lots of current events? Do you use PowerPoint presentation slides or do you draw on the board? Do you break up the time with discussion and group work? All these things can um, factor into how you will present your course materials online. And one thing that you should know and be aware of is that an online class will not be exactly the same as your in-person classroom, um, but it can function similarly using all of the online software and tools that are available. And it can also have the same learning outcomes and objectives. This is all possible. So what about your content? Um, are you thinking in general about the type of content you bring in uh, when you're putting your online class together? Your lecture, it's gonna be different than if you're simply, if you're simply summarizing a textbook chapter, for example. Um, if, you, if you teach with that method, method normally, you might think about how you could also augment the time by bringing in other resources into the conversation. Um, also thinking through what anecdotes you, anecdotes, anecdotes you tell and how you will illustrate um, that textbook information. Of course, um, having those personal stories in there is what makes your class special and what um, makes your lectures special. Um, and this is a very important, especially in an asynchronous class uh, because Otherwise, students could just get everything from the textbook. Also, um, when you are in class, do you use lots of multimedia in your lecture materials? Do you, do you also offer or encourage students to seek out remedial content? Um, and how do you bring in the professional um, 
the greater professional knowledge that, that you tap into regularly. So during the design process, we often um, leave choosing what type of technology to deliver content for the last um, possible moment because really, really um, the technology you choose for your course should be in sync with those desired competencies. We do have some resources for this on our ITU webpage. Um, this is also something that an instructional designer can help you think about if you come into the open lab sessions. So one way to uh, boost your instructor presence is through the use of video introductions and lectures in class. So when you include yourself in a lecture video, it brings your presence as an instructor to students and decreases the fe that feeling of disconnect between the online environment and the classroom. And students feel like they kind of get to know you as their teacher in a way that's more personal and real than if you only provide check chapters in the textbook for them to read. Um, there are a few basic guidelines for creating your own video, which can be really easily done using your smartphone or the video camera on your computer. Keep it short because our attention spans go adrift after about five to 10 minutes. Writing a script will help you consolidate your points and is something that you can also use for closed captioning later on. If you have a lot of information to impart, think about breaking it up into a few different recordings to make it more manageable. And also do a practice run just to make sure that everything is functioning well and you have good audio especially. So if you're working on an e-learning supported course, we have a video recording studio that's available and that we can use to help if you create professional videos designed for your courses, just throwing that out there. Also, we can add text and special effects to the background. And also, we could potentially have a PowerPoint presentation playing in the background as well. Screencasting is another method of preparing an effective online lecture. And basically, a screencast will record anything that is happening on your computer or mobile device screen while recording the audio at the same time. And there's a number of easy-to-use software available for creating screencasts, such as Screencast-O-Matic or Explain Everything if you're on your mobile device. And many faculty members at UAF are using screencasting to add audio to their PowerPoint style presentations. And this method is handy, especially if you want to show a variety of things within the same lecture beyond just the slide presentation, like a website or an animation or a specific software, so on. You can go back and forth and it will record whatever's happening on your screen. For example, you can even record like a screencast of a video playing along with yourself giving a lecture. And um, here the instructor is giving an overview of a lab mouse experiment, which is a video playing just above him while he's recording. So whether you've made a talking head video or a screencast, you can also transform it into an interactive video. This, this software gives you the power to add annotation to video, to introduce questions through quizzing mechanisms, provide um, branched pathways for more information, or kind of a choose your own path or scenario type experience. Um, you can also include links to other websites right inside the video itself. And um, this can make the video a lot more engaging and can also provide you an opportunity to introduce self-assessment as well as um, little content nuggets that you can test students on later, potentially. Video content can easily be embedded in Blackboard, WordPress, or any other online course location. So the student doesn't need to get bumped out of the online course in order to watch it. Another method is just using audio. 
some people are a little nervous at first, especially about uh, recording video or perhaps think that it's not necessary. So um, you can easily create audio recordings or, or even do a podcast for your class using audio streaming services such as SoundCloud. And these recordings can be embedded into your online course in an attractive way as well. And to get started with that, you'll want to create a script for your lecture that you can use later for captioning, um, which you'll need for the best accessibility. Um, you'll want to provide that alternately. And also, UAF eLearning has a SoundCloud account um, that will be free from advertisements. Uh, VoiceThread is, a, is another way to present your material, your course content for your lectures, and while also in inviting students to have some degree of interaction. And this is an interesting method also to involve your students in potentially creating uh, instructional content for the rest of class as well. You can create slides and then um, do voiceovers and invite others to either uh, do voiceover uh, comments or texts and, and you can have multi-pages and flip through and have different sets of commenting and um, audio narration over both. It's at voicethread.com and um, I encourage you to just check it out. Go there and look at their examples if you're curious. If you have guest lectures come in to class, um, this is also easy to do with embedded video. There's so many videos already published um, on YouTube and other streaming services. You can use these and you should use this content that's relevant to your subject. It's a way of kind of curating what's out there already around your topic for your students. Also, there are services out there that um, are really great for um, grabbing current events and, and creating a curated list, such as this Scoop It, um, but also things like Pinterest or Storify or even Twitter. Um, you can, um, it's, it's really relevant for what's happening right now. And keeping up with current events um, in your field can be assisted by these by these things. Um, before I leave this page, also I should mention that uh, you can also embed these, um, like whatever your most recent scooped event um, was on inside Blackboard or inside any other online space so that students can see um, what you've posted there most recently. Or you could send them out to this page of your curated news articles and then, you know, as, as a way to have them choose what to read or, or give them, them an assignment of what to read. Um, do you offer remedial or additional materials? There's also a lot of stuff out there that has already been created. There's no need to recreate the wheel, um, such as Khan Academy is a great example. You can also in easily embed these into your site in a, in a whole section that would just be for remedial um, materials, tutorials, help. Um, also, going beyond the subject for if, if you do have a super curious student who wants to learn more um, but may not be inclined to email you, you might want to provide additional materials and links out to those things. So lecturing via a synchronous session can also be very effective. Um, again, keeping the lecture time concise and the using the interactive, interactive features of the synchronous tools, such as sharing your screen, like we're doing right now. Um, do be prepared for students who have low bandwidth situations and test it out in advance. And you can do this by maybe holding a low stakes meeting at first with students to exchange introductions before the real sessions start. You'll quickly get a sense of who might have trouble in future sessions. 
And just in case, it's a good idea to record your session for students who are not able to make it. Also, when you're thinking about how you normally teach or how you would like to try teaching, uh, the flipped classroom is a model that some folks at UAF are using. So do you normally flip your course content or would you like to? Uh, this is particularly relevant if you're teaching synchronous sessions online um, or for the face-to-face -face class. A flipped course involves students preparing for class activities in advance of the meeting time and then coming, you know, they, they, watch, they watch video lecture, they reach, read the chapter, take notes, they work on problems and access other relevant online materials in advance of coming to class and they come to class. They're ready to practice what they've learned so far, but in an environment where they can ask questions and work with peers and get immediate feedback from you, the instructor. And some reasons why you might want to flip your class um, include feeling like you need more class time to help students get to a full understanding of a topic, wanting you to wanting to do more fun activities during class time, um, feeling like you give the same lecture term after term after term. And students regularly struggle in specific areas that you would like to address differently. These are all reasons that you might want to think about flipping your classroom time. So again, the flip, flipped online classroom can be used with face-to-face -face class, and it can be used with distance class with synchronous sessions. There are some tricks and tips to employing the flipped class model for sure, but um, you don't have to do it alone. You should check out the UAF faculty learning community on flipped classrooms to get in touch with your colleagues here at UAF who are using this technique already. On their website, you'll find great ideas and tips on what have worked for them and some ideas of how you can use this. So much of what I've been talking about includes ideas for putting you into your course materials in some way in the online modality. And just like a face-to-face -face course, this is one of the elements that makes online material become something special. And it's an opportunity for your creativity as a teacher to shine. Of course, great, mat great materials don't make a great online class. You also need great feedback and interaction. But things like introducing yourself to class with a video and providing your perspective on each topic, not just whatever the textbook author says, um, including your relevant stories and your materials, um, or maybe if you do use a textbook, maybe what your lecture is composed of is your stories more than, um, more than just summarizing what the textbook is already saying. Um, those are the things that are interesting as a student. So you're ac bringing your expertise and your experience in on that subject and highlighting what's important you think is what, what is important to know about. And then also um, broadening out and calling in those references to other experts so that students have a bigger picture of what's going on in the subject. So if you're teaching in the online environment or via a blended format, I'd like to invite you to attend one of our regularly scheduled open labs at UAF eLearning. Um, our instructional designers are available for helping with everything from curriculum development to determining the best technology to use and training you how to use it one-on-one. -on -one. So please visit this link for the faculty development calendar and also, I would like to mention that this session is just one of a series for building, um, for building courses. Up next week, we'll discuss developing learning activities and interaction in the online environment. And then later today, at 1 o'clock, um, there will be a virtual open lab. And to find the link to join this Hangout, go to our faculty development calendar at the link here, iteachu.uaf.edu slash events, and click on the virtual open lab for today, and you will see a link there to join the meeting. 
and that's all there is to it. If you haven't ever done a Google Hangout before, you'll need to um, download a tiny piece of software, and it takes a minute, but then uh, it should work for you. So this is what um, I had presented for today, prepared for today, and I'd like to open it up for any questions or comments. Hi, Jen. Um, we had one, one, a couple questions, and but then you finally answered it. But maybe if you could go back, um, someone was interested in the looking at the e-learning template that they could have inside of their Blackboard course. Sure. Show us um, maybe how. How, what that looks like again, um, or or also how to how to at request a copy of that. Sure. Um, well, you can certainly request a copy of that from any of us. Um, let me get back to that one page with the link to the owner's manual. And that was actually the other question was um, just to maybe talk a little bit more about the owner's manual and um, how it might be sure. used. Okay. So here's the link to the owner's manual. It's on our iteachu.uaf.edu and it's slash owners dash manual. Um, and uh, this page, let's see if I can just go there. Yeah. yeah. So when you come to the iteachu.uaf.edu page, the menu uh, is uh, it is underneath online training owner's manual, the first link there. And on this page, there's all kinds of good stuff about um, each one of these is a drop down menu, how to contact us, um, a little bit about um, information fluency in the learning assessment cycle, which if you've been to ITTU, you'll recall that we go into this, these concepts in great detail. Um, these are basic pedagogy, pedagogical, pedagogical frameworks that we um, use to help us, to help guide us through designing a course. Um, and then underneath demo courses, there's a whole bunch of links to a variety of different courses um, offered on all kinds of different platforms. And then scrolling down, um, you can go through all of these other sections, of course. Um, this is for you, uh, including like the syllabus template. This is another template that we offer um, that's pretty important. Uh, it includes boilerplate information um, already there for the things that are required and, um, you know, the Title IX and things like that that are already present. And then down here underneath structure and organization, underneath course stuff, um, here it is, template. So. To access the e-learning template, you first have to log into Blackboard. So you want to do that in a new tab. And once you're logged in, no, that doesn't like that one. Let me try a different one. Okay, once you're logged in, then you should be able to click on the next link down. Click here to get into the e-learning template. And it looks like this. Um, if you would like to get a copy of this, so this, this gets you into the template. Um, I believe you might have to click on, um, it might look like this when you first arrive. So you might see the quick enroll down here at the bottom. 
which you can do if you want to see the um, you know the back end stuff like the grade center and everything um, so you just click on the quick enroll and you'll be given the role of instructor um, so this is for you to kind of look at and to look around and to play with a little bit but really if you want to have a sandbox that you can play with we're happy to copy this over for you um, you can contact any of the designers or um, Tina Johnson or Chris Becks in particular are our LMS specialists so um, they are available as well to copy this over for you and it's automatically copied um, into um, there's a starter place template that's copied into your course if you're teaching an e-learning supported course Good. Thank you. Yeah. Did I answer all of that? Yeah. Um, we had another question. Um, so it was about uh, creating videos for the class, and um, the comment was, uh, "All I have is uh, iPhone." Mm -hmm. uh, is that okay, or where might I access other um, equipment that maybe is better than an iPhone, but not uh, so complicated that um, I can't uh, run it myself? Absolutely. Um, I have used an iPhone to record myself for my class. It works just fine. Uh, you should just make sure um, that you're setting it up in front of you in a manner so that it, it doesn't move around at all. Maybe use a tripod or, you know, prop it up with pillows or whatever you have to do. Um, it, it will record video that's adequate for instructor lectures absolutely so you can I've seen instructors who have recorded themselves on their iPhone at home with maybe their library of books around them and you know maybe at some point during their recording their their dog comes up or their cat comes up or you hear something in the background and it kind of adds a little bit just a layer of personality to your lecture that mm -hmm. personally as a student you know, I, I kind of want to know my my teacher a little bit. Um, you know, just just a little few little things. Oh, you know, oh, he's got a dog. That's cool. Or, oh, <laughs> she's got a cat. You know, that's that's just a little nugget of information, a personal information that makes um, makes a little bit more of a connection for me. So, using your iPhone at home or wherever you are out and about um, is absolutely doable. Just make sure that it's sturdy so your video is not moving all over the place mm -hmm. and making students seasick. Okay. Yeah. Um, we do have a um, professional video recording studio, and, and it's on the third floor of the library. And if you're working on an e learning supported course, we are happy to meet with you and provide the mechanism for you to, um, to have a professionally created video. And we have a green screen, so we can put behind it any number of things uh, that you'd like, or just something static, too. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's all the questions came in that came in. Um, so if if you're watching and have a question, there's a Q and A uh, session or option on the right side of your screen. So this would be a good time to ask any other questions if you have them. You covered a lot of material, Jen. Um, do you have your presentation up um, somewhere where we can get back to it? It is linked um, on this presentation page on the Google Plus Hangouts page. It is linked to from that location. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, well, thank you. Thank you, Heidi. And if there's no other questions, then I will hop off. But if you think of any, um, feel free to shoot me an email. You can find my email on my presentation slides or searching um, at people.alaska.edu for Jennifer Moss or on the elearning.uaf.edu website under the staff contact. I believe it's under the contact page. Great. Thanks for the great information, Jen. Thanks, Heidi. Bye. Bye. <laughs>